In 2019, Universal Orlando opened one of the most technically advanced roller coasters ever built, replacing Dueling Dragons. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure will be a story coaster taking riders on an exciting journey into the Forbidden Forest. At least once it got past its troubled opening anyway. Come and say hello. Greetings, travelers. I am Merlin. Welcome to the Lost Continent. When Islands of Adventure opened in 1999, it gave guests the opportunity to journey through a highly themed entranceway into six different islands, five of which will be based on licensed intellectual properties. One was not. Yes, this is a mysterious land filled with romance and adventure. The Lost Continent will perhaps be one of the most detailed of them all. Based around ancient myths and legends, the area was divided into three subsections. Sinbad's Bazaar, an Arabian marketplace, the Atlantis-esque Lost City, and the medieval forest Merlinwood. Home to not one, but two B&M inverted roller coasters that will be locked in an eternal battle over the marsh outside of Merlinwood. This is the castle of Merlinwood Forest. The sight of a powerful battle between two fearsome dueling dragons. Merlinwood will be home to a battle of fire and ice, a place guests could make their way through an enchanted forest into Merlinwood Castle. Inside, they were past the skulls and bodies of fallen knights as riders made their way towards a fire or ice dragon, Pyrock and Blizzrock, who are hell bent on the other's destruction. The two huge dueling inverted B&M roller coasters would reach speeds of nearly 60 miles per hour on the 3,200 feet of each dragon's track, which fiercely dueled offering a spectacular twisting design of steel, with near misses from each other being as close as 18 inches at some points. While I won't go into too much detail on dueling dragons here, make sure you take a look at our full expedition on the ride and surrounding area. Jawlin Dragons was one of the major, marquee attractions that Islands of Adventure was marketed on. While each roller coaster by itself was not too different to other experiences around the world, it was the Jawlin feature and backstory which would make the ride unique. The line was so detailed that it set up the experience perfectly, featuring rooms full of each dragon's victims, either charred or frozen when heading through the winding caverns of the castle. Sadly, some of that uniqueness of the two rides would be removed when Merlinwood would be no more. With the announcement of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter coming to Islands of Adventure, the area surrounding the castle was transformed into a completely different land. That we are adding a new dimension to the world of Harry Potter and bringing it to life in an entirely new way. We are creating the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal's Islands of Adventure theme park in Orlando. No longer themed around the original ideas, but after those of the world of Harry Potter. And with it, Dueling Dragons would be no more, sadly including that incredibly themed queue. The ride, however, would remain. During the land's transformation, the attraction would stay open until March 2010, closing for just a few months before reopening as part of the Wizarding World, which officially opened in June 2010. Gone was the iconic entrance and highly detailed line. Instead, the attraction would now be known as Dragon Challenge, themed around the first task from the Triwizard Tournament in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. The highly detailed, immersive new Harry Potter land was an incredible leap forward for theme park design. While the ride was essentially the same, Jewel and Dragons had gone from being one of the best, immersive attractions in the land it sat in, to perhaps one of the weakest. It was the first inclination that the once iconic roller coasters remaining time may have been limited. The following year in 2011, the ride lost the dueling aspect altogether, 
due to safety concerns, which really took the former attraction even further away from what made it so special to many. Just like any material product, steel roller coasters have a product life and eventually will reach the end of their life. For a theme park like Islands of Adventure, this comes somewhat quicker than a regional park due to its year-round operation of its attractions. Two rides with three B&M roller coasters opened with Islands of Adventure, all of which would reach this end of life at around the same time. One would be scrapped, but completely rebuilt, exactly how it previously was. The Incredible Hulk was rebuilt with all new track, supports, and trains, while using the exact same layout essentially creating a brand new ride, just one which is exactly the same as the one that stood there before. Dragon Challenge, however, would take a different path. It would be scrapped and replaced with something completely different. The first major attraction from opening day Islands of Adventure to be closed and replaced with a new attraction. Something now much more fitting to the land it would be found in. In July 2017, Universal announced that Dragon Challenge would close on September 5th of the same year to make way for an all-new coaster experience that would take guests deeper into the Wizarding World. Universal stated that the ride would be the most highly themed experience they had ever created, with a new level of storytelling and an action-packed adventure that would be fun for the whole family. Rumors began to circulate on what would come to the huge section of land Dueling Dragons would vacate. The top contenders were Dynamic Attractions Special Effects Coaster, a Mac Inverted Power Coaster, or more likely, a motorbike coaster beamed to Hagrid. Motorbike roller coasters have been around for a while. The first was made by Vekoma at Toverland in the Netherlands in 2004. Sam Perla also made a version which uses flywheel launches, and Intamin created a design using tyre propelled launches, with two in Australia and one in Denmark. One of the Australian versions made by Intamin, Mick Duhan's Motor Coaster, opened in 2007 and was regularly chosen as one of the worst steel roller coasters in the world, thanks to its boring layout and painful restraints. Universal would choose Intamin to make their new ride. Because in my world, we race in the sky. Mick Doohan's motor coaster, just one of the big six thrill rides at Dreamworld. After Dragon Challenge's closure, it was quickly demolished, with track beginning to be removed just a few weeks after it had closed and work began on the replacement. Every aspect of the previous ride was removed except for the station, queue building, and entranceway. Construction on the new attraction began in January 2018, and it wouldn't be until October that year that any more information on the ride would be released. The official Wizarding World website, Pottermore, released a teaser image which offered no details, yet hinted that the new attraction would be located in the Forbidden Forest, as well as featuring magical creatures. Construction continued at a lightning-fast pace. Get it? Harry Scar? Lightning? Yeah. And in February 2019, details were released on what would be coming to the park just four months later. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure would open on June 13th, 2019. The following month, more details were finally given. Dubbed a story coaster, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, you have to call it by its full name every time, by the way, would combine a new level of storytelling with innovative coaster technology and rich environments and sets, including an actual forest with more than 1,200 trees. The world's most spellbinding journey is about to take its wildest turn yet. Prepare to face the Forbidden Forest and join Hagrid to encounter the rarest of magical creatures in the epic new addition to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. On the new ride, you would join Hagrid on a journey through the Forbidden Forest, with each guest riding specifically designed magical motorbikes, reaching speeds up to 50 miles per hour, encountering some of the world's rarest magical creatures, and becoming entangled in a thicket of devil's snare. Universal stated Hagrid's magical creatures motorbike adventure would use innovative coaster tech, and that would not be an understatement. What Intamin would create would perhaps be one of the most complicated roller coasters ever built. Nothing like the earlier motorbike coasters found around the world. The ride's grand opening was held on June 11th, 2019, 
with multiple Harry Potter casts in attendance. Here is a special message from Robbie Coltrane. I am excited to welcome you to this new chapter of magic here at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Sadly, Hagrid himself, Robbie Coltrane, was unable to attend due to health issues, but was on screen in a recorded message. The attraction featured very little team member previews and no soft openings at all, with many people waiting for hours outside the attraction for that small chance of riding. This was not the norm for such a high-tech experience. We're making some progress along the line. There is the entrance to the ride, right there. We are not far now. They're kind of cramming us in though because the ride's still down. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure began after you headed through the same entrance that previously led into Dragon Challenge. Inside would be an expanded outdoor queue with Harry Potter theming throughout, such as the back of Hagrid's hut, the front of which can be seen from Flight of the Hippogriff. Shortly after, guests entered into the inside section of the queue building, which was reused from Dueling Dragons. Inside, you pass a tribute to the ice and fire that came before and into the pre-show. Here, Hagrid and Arthur Weasley attempt to duplicate Hagrid's motorbike, which was once owned by Sirius Black, to take the Muggles, you, to the edge of the Forbidden Forest. Oh, now don't you worry, Venice. I'll see you all down there. Of course, none of this will happen when you actually ride the bikes. Uh, meet us down in the stables. Might be safer to duplicate the bikes down there for room. Then, you can ride them. After some classic Arthur and Hagrid shenanigans, the line continues through the same route that it always previously did. This time with some Harry Potter theming throughout, it does not quite live up to the original queue line experience offered in the early years, but it is fitting for this new attraction. The best part of the queue is the final room, which features projections across the ceiling showing different creatures and scenes. Throughout are multiple easter eggs such as the Monster Book of Monsters and Hagrid's Gloves in Hagrid's Workshop, which is in the room after the Long Tunnel section. You might even spot a Triwizard Tournament egg if you look hard enough sitting among the various creature eggs and many, many more surprises. The ride's vehicles were unlike previous motorbike coasters and were in fact more similar to regular roller coaster cars, just highly themed after the motorbike from the movie. Offering two different experiences, the bike and the sidecar, each with a regular lap bar to secure riders, it is much more comfortable than some of the versions which restrain your legs and lower back. This definitely was not the Intamin motorbike coasters of old. With seven rows on each train, they feature speakers that provide music and effects throughout the attraction, including the roar of the vehicles. Oh! After exiting the station, the ride heads towards an abandoned hut on the edge of the forest to begin the care of magical creatures class. One of the first creatures you see, or, well, I guess don't see, on the ride are Festrals, mentioned by Hagrid. Inside the hut, two animatronics sit, one of a blast-ended Scroot and the other of Hagrid himself. Hagrid's animatronic stands at over seven feet tall and recreates the movements and expressions of Robbie Coltrane in the role with 24 unique body movements. Even his teeth were digitally scanned to make it as lifelike as possible, along with a custom recorded script. The blast ended screw would be the first look at a creature that had never been seen in any of the films. After a small launch out of the hut and through an abandoned section of castle, Hagrid warns riders the bikes are out of control and heading into the Forbidden Forest. Next, riders pass an animatronic Fluffy, the three-headed dog seen in the first movie, and then pass a group of Cornish pixies that have taken over the Ford Anglia from the Chamber of Secrets. The car then continues to rise up a spike before losing power and dropping backwards for a reverse section straight past a centaur. All right. <laughs> great shakes at magic. Oh, Craigie, you're tangled in devil's snare. Repeat, Lumos 
Salem after me. Lumoth Salem. The riders stop and find themselves in the tentacles of Devil's Snare before falling into a cave of blast ended screws. Finally, riders press a button in front of them to use dragon fire to launch to the ride's top speed of 50 miles per hour in 4 seconds, out of the cave before heading back to the station past a unicorn and a baby. <laughs> There's a unicorn! Oh look, she's a mum. Yeah, I got stuck here a lot when it first opened. The ride's opening day of June 13th, 2019 was the same day as in the book that Tom Riddle framed Hagrid for moaning Myrtle Warren's murder in 1943. The opening day lines were huge, reaching up to a 10 hour wait. At various points I've thought about throwing in the towel and leaving, but this has now become an experience. We've formed like a sort of a line family. We're all watching out for each other, got each other's backs. We're making some sort of a tribal order in there. I don't know what's going to happen after this. This wasn't helped by the ride's consistent technical issues that would plague the attraction for months. No matter where you looked in the opening weeks and months, there were reports of troubles due to the huge amount of ride downtime it was experiencing. There's no guarantee from this point that we're going to be able to ride this at all, but we're going to hang in there and keep trying for a little bit longer. At some point, I really may give up. We're experiencing oh. a slight delay in terms of sound. Oh, apologies. We should be ready to go shortly. Thank you for your patience. Guests would be lucky if they could visit Universal and even ride the attraction. Technical issues were not surprising for one of the most advanced roller coasters ever created. One that is even more advanced than you may first think. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure consists of seven launches, the most on any roller coaster in the world. Designed to operate 12 trains on the track at the same time, feature multiple animatronics, two switch tracks, and not just one, but two identical 17-foot vertical drop tracks. During the first few weeks, the ride would open later in the day. This was later changed to opening with the park, but closing early, to try and keep working on improving the ride's reliability and performing its daily maintenance. Unlike previous motorbike coasters, this high-tech version would use seven LSM launches on the ride that would essentially also work as block zones. These allowed one train between each section of the launches, or sections, thus allowing multiple trains to operate on the circuit at once. Another example of this at Universal is the high amount of block breaks on the Rip Ride Rocket right next door. This was just a different way to achieve that a much needed feature to provide the high capacity required for such a busy park. At 5,053 feet long, it is the longest roller coaster in Florida and really is an impressive feat of engineering. Every single aspect of the ride has to be controlled by a very in-depth computer system. The seven different launches provide multiple points that could cause an issue and require everything that came before it to be halted, causing the ride to be shut down. The launches are all needed to be working perfectly, but as well as this, there is a fast switch track that quickly needs to be moved when the ride passes over it and into the 70 degree vertical spike, and heading backwards again over that same piece of switch track. All of this needs to occur in the matter of moments, and needs to work perfectly too. The ride then reaches another switch track, which decides which of the two identical drop tracks your train will head into. You can see why this ride has issues when you look at each and every one of all of these moving parts having to work together perfectly. A vertical drop track was first found on 13 at Alton Towers and has come to multiple other roller coasters around the world. Well, that ride was a bit timid. At least it's uh, time now to get off. Apparently, oh, little jolt there. <laughs> okay, let's get up. Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> when Universal stated that it would be innovative, they were not kidding. With multiple track sections, moving tracks, drop tracks, switch tracks, and multiple sensors, the ride 
is incredibly complicated. One issue in one area would cause delays in any of the other areas. Each section has to work with no issues at all for a continuous experience throughout the ride, for not just the train you are on, but every single train coming behind you. It isn't rare to be sat on one of these specific stop sections as the block zones ahead have become, uh, blocked up. It can, however, operate and has regularly with only one drop section in use. The 2 minute 55 long ride is completely controlled by computers, unlike most roller coasters where operators dispatch the rides onto the course. On Hagrid's Magical Creep, actually on second thought, let's try and shorten that name. I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. On Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, <laughs> each train is dispatched by the computer control system, which monitors locations on the track and can speed up or slow down the loading platform to attempt to try and keep every single aspect of the ride in sync to create a seamless experience. All while using a moving platform to load and vehicles hardly ever completely stopping. Unfortunately, the ride opened just a little bit too early and could have done with much more time to be tested and bring it up to speed to iron out the kinks. Universal, however, was committed to the announced opening date and opened as planned. Many people had booked holidays and a media event was planned already, so to change the date would have been quite the task. Which of these options was the right one? I don't really know. For those who did get to ride, they loved it. Further tweaking and updated were carried out on the attraction for months, and even the full first year, with the amount of trains continuing to be increased over the next months until eventually getting to the point where the ride runs reliably with as many as 10 trains at once, and that troubled start would be a thing of the past. I think it's really kind of set the bar for attractions. It's a really exciting expansion to the Wizarding World. We've seen a, a kind of Magical Creatures class with Hagrid in the film, and we, we've read about them, but we've never been able to experience one for ourselves anywhere. Uh, and that's an exciting opportunity. As one of the most technically advanced rides anywhere in the world, the ride, now just like it should, creates such a seamless experience that when working smoothly, you don't really even think about how high tech the ride really is. Reportedly costing $300 million, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure is the most expensive roller coaster ever created. The ride takes you on a high-speed journey into the world of Harry Potter, bringing story elements, excitement, and just pure straight fun, which is exactly what a top-tier ride should do. There are those that don't think it lives up to the legacy that Dueling Dragons previously held on the site, that it isn't as thrilling or scary, but I personally do not agree. Dueling Dragons is a sad story of a ride which by the time it closed was already a shell of its former self. One that deserved a fitting replacement, and luckily, this time, we got one. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure offers an experience many more people can enjoy. One that you get to the end and your mouth just sits wide open with delight. A pure, fun, immersive attraction that now finally fits and even exceeds the experience of the incredible land it sits in. For those who want something more thrilling though, we'll get another top class Intamin roller coaster right next door in 2021, giving us the best of both worlds. I love Dueling Dragons and always will, but waiting nine hours on opening day to ride the latest, greatest attraction, for me, this is one that lived up to the hype, even if it sadly did have a little bit of a troubled star. No part of Islands of Adventure has changed as much as Merlinwood and the Lost Continent, but you could argue that the core still remains, an imaginative land filled with mystery, wonder, and magic, pushing the boundary on theme park attractions. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure continues that legacy as one of the greatest theme park attractions ever created. After all, there is no Hogwarts without Hagrid.
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Islands of Adventure. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes, and a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time. There you are. I hope you did well in your herbology class. Harry, can you fetch me some fire seeds from a rare plant in the forest? The plant lives just beyond the gargoyle gate.